In this video, we will be discussing some problems based on Mohr circle and direct shear test. We will have a quick recap on Mohr circle. We have studied that Mohr circle, the center of the Mohr circle is at sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 in the sigma plane. That is from this point to the center of the Mohr circle, the distance is sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. Sigma 1 is the major principal stress and sigma 3 is the minor principal stress. And the radius of the circle that is from C to E, the distance will be sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. This point from O to point E you will be getting sigma 3 from O to point F you will be getting sigma 1 and if P is the pole then this will be your major principal plane and this will be your minor principal plane. So these are the um, basic things of Mohr circle and sigma and tau value for point D can be obtained from these equations. You might have studied these equations in other subjects. And according to Mohr Coulomb failure criterion, you can write sigma 1 like this. So, this equation gives the relationship between the principal stresses and the shear parameters. The principal stresses are sigma 1 and sigma 3, and the shear parameters are cohesion C and angle of internal friction phi. Okay. Now, in this, you can see a term tan square 45 plus phi by 2. So, this term is known as flow index. Okay. So, tan square 45 degree plus phi by 2. This term is sometimes denoted as NQ. This is also equal to 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi. So, this term is known as flow index. Okay. So, these are the basic things. Now, we will consider a problem. If the major and minor principal stresses through a mass of soil at the instant of failure are 52 kPa and 12 kPa respectively, respectively, calculate the normal and shear stress on a plane making an angle of 35 degree with the direction of minor principal stress. Okay, this question a similar question was asked in the university exam conducted in December 2018. So in this question major and minor principal stresses are given sigma 1 and sigma 2 are given the values given in kPa kilo Pascal and we need to calculate the normal stress and the shear stress that is we need to find out the value of sigma and tau on a plane making an angle of 35 degree with the direction of minor principal stress. So that means we know that sigma 3 is acting in this direction. So the direction of minor principal stress is horizontal. So I am going to calculate the tau and sigma value on the plane making an angle of 35 degree with the horizontal. I repeat. The direction of minor principal stress is the direction of sigma 3 that is horizontal. The direction of sigma 3 is horizontal. So, I am going to find out the sigma value and tau value on the plane which is at an angle 35 with the horizontal. So, that means on this plane I am going to find out the sigma and tau value normal stress and the shear stress. So, we will start. The given values are major principal stress sigma 1 is given it is 52 kPa minor principal stress sigma 3 is given it is 12 kPa we need to find out sigma and tau at an angle 35 degree okay we'll be constructing a more circle and we'll be finding out what is sigma and tau value okay so first you need to draw the more circle so when we know that on horizontal axis you have sigma values and the on the vertical axis you have tau value and as we have already seen we, this is the center of the circle and this is the radius of the circle okay so here i have taken the sigma on horizontal axis and tau values on the vertical axis you should uh, one point to be noted is that on the horizontal and vertical axis you have the same scale here also one unit is 10 here also the same one unit is 10 so 
the scale taken on the horizontal axis and vertical axis should be the same now as we have found out the center of the circle should be at 32 kPa on sigma axis so from 0 this is 0 this is 10 20 30 at 32 you will have the center of the circle you can place the compass at this point see if this type of question is asked you can uh, you can uh, ask for a graph paper okay you can draw this in the graph paper so take a suitable scale and at 32 you can put the compass and then the radius of the circle should be 20 kPa okay so take 20 on the compass put the center at 32 and draw the circle okay so you'll be you can draw the more circle like that and since we have taken the major principal axis in the horizontal direction we can have this point as pole p fine now what you have to do is our aim is to find out the value of sigma and tau on the plane which makes an angle 35 with the horizontal isn't it so from this small point p you can draw a line which is at an angle 35 degree with the horizontal okay so a line is drawn from the pole inclined at 35 degree see like this okay so this angle is 35 degree and this line will meet the circle at c now you have to take the coordinates of point c in order to get the sigma and tau value just take the coordinates this is your sigma coordinate and this is your tau coordinate. So from these coordinate values you can say that on a plane which is inclined at 35 degree to the horizontal the tau value is 18.6 kPa and the sigma value is 39 kPa. Okay so you can just measure it from the graph. So this is how you solve this problem. This question a similar question was asked for university exam. Okay, hope it is clear. Now we'll move on to the next problem. In a direct shear test conducted on dense sand, the sample fails at shear stress of 75 kilonewton per meter square when the normal stress was held constant at 100 kilonewton per meter square. Draw more circle for the failure condition and determine the angle of shear resi shearing resistance orientation of the major and minor principal planes and the stresses acting on them and the orientation of the plane of maximum shear stress. So in this question the data or oh, data given are the shear stress and normal stress at failure while conducting a direct shear test is given. Okay. So only these two values are given and it is said that that uh, it is uh, the test is conducted direct shear test is conducted on a dense sand okay so only these three data are given first one is that shear stress at failure is 75 normal stress at failure is 100 and the test direct shear test is done on dense sand these are the three things that you should note down okay now we need to draw the Mohs circle and find out the angle of shearing resistance that is phi you need to find out the value of phi angle of shearing resistance is nothing but your angle of internal friction phi then you need to find out what are the which are the major and minor principal planes and stresses also major principal stress and minor principal stress you need to find out sigma 1 and sigma 3 value and also the orientation of the plane of maximum shear stress you need to locate the point for which you have the maximum shear stress and then you need to find out the orientation of that plane okay similar question was asked in december 2019 as well as in june 2017 so here given values are the normal stress at uh, failure is given 75 kilonewton per meter square the shear stress at failure is also given 100 kilonewton per meter square now we'll see how to do the problem okay here first you have to draw the two axes the sigma axis and tau axis and i told you that the test is done on sand 
So for sand, what is the value of C? Cohesion. For sand, the cohesion value can be taken as 0. So you got 1 point. We have studied that for uh, sand, C, if C value 0, then this line will cut the toe axis at 0. Okay. So here C value, will, what is C? C is the intercept of this line on toe. If C value is 40, then this line will meet toe axis at this point. The line will be like this. Okay. But this test is conducted on sand. For sand, C value is 0. So this line will touch toe axis at 0, point 0. Okay. So you got one point and then you have the toe and sigma value at failure. Okay. So that point is 175. So you have to plot point C such that the sigma value is 100 and toe value is 75. So like that you got this point and point C. Okay. Then you should join these two points and then just extend this line. So this is your failure envelope. So first you will be getting this point and then you will be getting this point based on 175 based on the given value and then just draw the failure envelope. That is the third step. Draw the failure envelope. You got the failure envelope. Now we know that the more circle is always tangential to the failure envelope. We have studied that. Okay. So what we do is we will be drawing a circle such that it is tangential to this line at point C. Point C corresponds to the failure point, isn't it? So, at C, this line will be tangential to the Mo circle. For that, what we do is, we will be drawing a line which is perpendicular to this line from C. I will be just drawing a line which is perpendicular to this failure plane. Let me draw that C. Here, I have a line which is perpendicular to the failure envelope. So this line will meet the sigma axis at this point and with this point at as center and with this line as a radius you can draw the more circle. Okay. So I repeat when you draw a perpendicular that line will be cutting the sigma axis at this point. Okay. Then keeping this point as center and this line as radius draw a circle like this. Okay. So this is your circle. Fine. So this is your circle. Now we know that in direct shear test always the failure plane will be horizontal. We have studied in the previous video. Okay. So from point C draw a horizontal line which represents the failure plane. Okay. And this line will be meeting the circle at one point and that will be your pole P. Fine. So in direct shear, always remember this point. In direct shear test, we know that the failure plane is horizontal. Therefore, from the point which represents failure, just draw a straight line and that line will meet the Mo circle at your pole P. Okay. So this is how you get pole P. Now we know that in order to find out the direction of major principal plane and minor principal plane, you just have to join point A and point P. We know that point A represents the minor principal plane, minus principal stress. Okay. From O to point A, this value will be your minor principal stress. Okay, so just join point P and point A to get the minor principal plane. This will be the direction of minor principal plane. Similarly, we know that point B gives the value of major principal stress. So O to B will give you, this distance will give you the major principal stress. Now join P and B will be getting a line and that will be your major principal plane. That will be the direction of major principal plane. Okay. So the next step is to draw, join pole P and A, pole P and B. Now before that, uh, shearing 
angle of shearing resistance is asked angle of internal friction is asked we know that the the angle between the failure envelope and horizontal will give you the value phi okay so after obtaining the pole you have to measure the lengths and angles in order to obtain the asked the values okay the first first one is angle of shearing resistance that can be obtained from measuring this angle with the horizontal the value measured is 37 degrees so phi is equal to 37 okay like that as i told you you can just join p and point a to get the minor principal plane and point p and point b to get the major principal plane okay now for tau max we, uh, we need to find out the plane orientation of the plane of tau max so this is the tau axis here we can find a point on the Mohr circle for which you have the maximum tau value see here topmost point will give you the maximum shear value maximum tau value so just join that point and p okay see point d is the topmost value from point p to point d draw a line and consider this angle okay this will give you the orientation of the plane on which the tau value is maximum okay hope everything is clear we'll just uh, find out what are the values so first one as i told you phi is equal to 37 degree that is from the angle between the failure envelope and the horizontal this is angle phi okay that is angle of shearing resistance or angle of internal friction now the next value is the major principal stress it is from this point to point b so this length is 240 kilonewton per meter square it is obtained from the graph okay then next is minor principal stress sigma 3 as you all know from this point to this point this value is 62 kilonewton per meter square then orientation of major principal plane it is like uh, this we have understood that this is the major principal plane so what is the angle between major principal plane and horizontal it is 62 degrees taken in clockwise direction isn't it from the horizontal go in clockwise direction to get the major principal plane okay so you have to specify the direction also you have to specify the angle the direction and with which reference plane it is making that angle okay now similarly for minor principal plane this angle is measured using protractor see all the angles are measured using protractor so when you uh, when you use a protractor and find this value as 28 we can say that the angle between the horizontal and minor principal plane is 28 degree taken in the anti-clockwise direction from horizontal you have to go anti-clockwise direction for 28 degrees and then you'll be getting the minor principal plane then the last one is orientation of plane of maximum shear stress we know that point d represents the maximum value of shear stress to to this point d corresponds to to max now join d p and this angle will be the will give you the orientation of plane on which the maximum shear stress is occurring so this angle is 17.5 degrees and it is taken in the clockwise direction from the horizontal so 17.5 degrees in the clockwise direction with horizontal. So this is how you solve the problem using more circles. Please go through these problems. As I told you, these type of questions are asked for the university exam. So thoroughly go through. Thank you.